guys, Cooking with Kim D, Kim Dontremont here. Um, I wanted to show you one of our new spring 2021 products, which is the donut hole pan. Um, so we have a full size donut pan and now we have a donut hole pan. This has been a lot of fun to use. Um, it has 24 wells. And not only do we sell the donut hole pan, but we now sell a donut mix, which is part of our pantry line. Um, I love this donut hole mix, it tastes really good. <clears throat> and all I had to do to add to the batter was a cup of milk. You can do either a quarter cup of vegetable oil or butter, and in my opinion, butter makes everything better, so I did a quarter cup of melted butter. And then the one package of donut mix. Just mixed it up with a whisk, boom. Now, the and it made about 28 um, donut holes, maybe 29, I might have snuck one. <laughs> Um, and all I did was take our kitchen spritzer and go over it and then I've used this a couple of times and I've been trying to figure out the exact amount to make it as rounded as possible um, for um, a donut hole. So I wanted to show you what I came up with tonight. So this smaller one here, it's a little flatter, that was using our smallest scoop. This is a one tablespoon scoop. So that made this smaller one, <clears throat> excuse me. So not exactly a complete circle. About one and a half definitely made an overall better shape. <clears throat> so that was about a teaspoon and a half. So this, the next size scoop, our medium scoop is two tablespoons. So this is too big. If you do this, you're almost gonna get like a mushroom cap effect. Um, so this one, which isn't bad, um, I actually did them a couple weeks ago. I made um, Boston cream pie ones. And by the time I dipped them in chocolate and everything, you could barely notice anyway. But if you do want nice round ones, pretty even um, circumference, then it is a tablespoon and a half. What I ended up doing, I just found it to be a lot easier. Um, this is one of our decorating bags. This is the one with the large coupler. And I just put the batter in here and then just kind of eyeballed it to two thirds full. Um, I, like I said, I've played with this a little bit lately to figure out the best ratio. Um, so I had a good, a good idea of where I needed to um, fill it up to. So great use of our decorating bag. So again, um, about 28, 29-ish on the donut holes. All right, I am making a maple glazed candied bacon donut hole tonight. Yum! Um, I took some bacon and I don't know if you can hear that. It is so candied and it is so yummy <laughs> and I want to eat the whole bowl and I think my daughter and my husband do too. Um, really good. All I did though, so when I am cutting up bacon, when I'm making bacon that's going to be used for like bacon bits or um, like this, a lot of times I'll use this for like salads and stuff this, this size. I take the pound of bacon, I put it on a, um, cutting, a cutting board, and I actually cut the bacon into long strips in the big slab. And then I put it inside my um, stock pot, and then I used the mix and chop to kind of break it all apart. And then you just drain off the grease, and then you're just left with this. I just think it's a lot easier. I can do it inside, um, this nice big vessel so it doesn't splatter as much. Um, I mean, obviously if I was doing strips, I probably wouldn't do it in here because you wouldn't get very much down the bottom, but um, I love doing it, cooking my bacon. When I'm cutting it up anyway, I just do it in here um, and I find that it is a lot easier and a lot less mess. All right, so we have our candied bacon. Now we need our maple glaze. So inside one of my glass mixing bowls, I have um, two tablespoons of melted butter. And then to that, I am adding a third of a cup of, oh, wow, I had just a third of a cup of maple syrup. And this is pure maple syrup. I don't see why you couldn't use, um, you know, log cabin, this butter's worth, whatever you want to call, um, whatever you use. I'm adding just a sprinkle of salt. I think the salt brings out some of the, um, the sweetness. So mix that up 
And then to that, I have a cup of confectioner sugar. And I'm going to add this a little bit at a time so that I make sure I'm mixing it um, and it hopefully won't be too lumpy. So I'll have a nice smooth glaze. Um, so I also have found, back to the donut holes, um, 11 or 12 minutes is about where I'm finding um, is my sweet spot to have um, a good, as you can see, they definitely do get a little bit browner on one side, the side that's in the pan. Um, but this, I'm finding 11 to 12 minutes seem to be the sweet spot um, for my oven and what I want to bake them to. Um, they recommend letting them cool inside the donut hole pan for 10 minutes and then taking them out and transferring them to a cooling rack. This is um, Pampered Chef's cooling rack. They're actually stackable. So if you have multiples of them, you can stack them up. Um, you can stack quite a few on top of one another. They're great at Christmas time when making lots of cookies and everything um, to help, help save some space on the counter. All right, so we're gonna get this all mixed up. And I don't really have a recipe for this. I kind of just went online and um, I mean, obviously I have a recipe for the donut hole, but for the glaze, um, I just kind of went online and I'm trying this out for the first time. Oh, the bacon though. So the bacon is one pound of bacon. I cooked it until it was crisp, drained it. I added in a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar a tablespoon and a half of maple syrup, and then like literally two shakes of cinnamon um, into it just to add a little something else, add another little dimension. All right, this looks good, nice and smooth. I just wanna take a quick taste, see how it tastes. I don't have any spoons in here, do I? Okay, I'm gonna use the tip of a measuring spoon. Hmm, that's good. If I had maple extract, I would probably add just a tiny bit of maple extract, um, but I think it'll all it'll all taste nice together. All right. So we have our glaze. So now I'm going to do is assemble them. So what I'm going to do is because the glaze may, might drip. Whoops! I just lost little man down. It's savable. I'm just putting one of our flexible cutting mats under here just to catch any drips. Then I'm going to take the lighter side and dip it in. And I'm going to see how these set up because this is not a super thick glaze. Um, and I was reading some blogs about glazes and whatnot um, on donuts. And they said that um, don't be afraid to double dip them. So I think I'm going to let this sit for a couple of minutes to kind of stick on there. And then I'm sure I'll have plenty of glaze left to be able to go behind and um, give them another little bit of tastiness. All right. But I do want to show you what it looks like. Oh, they're so cute. All right, so we've got like four done here. Let me go back to the original one because it sat a little, at least a few seconds. So I'm going to take my muffin, my muffin, um, my donut hole. I'm going to dip. And now we have a maple glazed candied bacon donut hole. I cannot wait to try one of these very shortly, like as soon as I stop this video. <laughs> um, so I'll put some extra information. I did take a couple pictures of how I cut the bacon up and stuff just to kind of give you guys an idea of what I was doing. So I'll throw a couple of pictures down below um, and I'll try to write up a little quick recipe on what I did um, just so you have something to follow. But um, yeah, lots of fun. Other things you can do with this. Um, so obviously donut holes. We also sell a pancake mix. Pancake mix is excellent. Um, I've seen people do pancake holes um, and do different things with those. Um, meatballs. If you want to put your meatballs in here and cook them in the oven, it keeps your bottom of your meatball nice and um, rounded. So I've seen a lot of um, 
consultants doing that. I actually saw one consultant that did, so they put their meat, meatball mix in, and then they stuffed a piece of mozzarella cheese in the middle of it. So they made kind of little meatballs with stuffed with cheese. Um, those looked really yummy and then served some marinara with them uh, for an appetizer. So all different things. Um, check out my website. You'll probably find some more recipes on there as well. But um, any questions, please feel free to reach out. Happy baking!